freedoms their Western life allows. If you're one of these people that enjoy going out clubbing and getting completely rat arsed, you know, like laying in the curb like four o'clock in the morning with all sick on your face and stuff, or maybe Islam isn't for you, even though you might need it. How easy is it for converts to adapt to a faith where men can marry up to four wives? All my friends know that I'm a co-wife. I've never kept that a secret from anyone. But why are they embracing a faith that some people associate with religious extremism? The way I see it is I'm not a terrorist. And I know that my fiancé, the, the way he is, he's not a terrorist. Unlike the converts, Shano Bukhari was born and brought up a Muslim. I believe in my religion. Being modern doesn't mean I don't believe in God. But she doesn't regularly practice her Muslim faith. She loves all the freedoms her Western life allows. In fact, she's a model. In total contrast, she'll be meeting converts who try to follow Islamic guidelines in everything they do. I want to know why women are converting to Islam. So I'm going to go and meet five converts and try to understand why they've converted to a new religion. She'll find out how Islam's changed their lives and what unexpected difficulties they've had to face. I don't know how converts get married, I really don't. But what might the converts teach Shanna about her own faith? I look at Muslim. Shanna's a 26-year-old Muslim from Manchester and she's a top model. I just love the whole looking so elegant, glamorous, pretty, dolled up. At the age of 15, I just knew I wanted to get into modelling. Shanna comes from a large British Pakistani family. I was the only one out of all the daughters who loved dressing up, who would change like three to four times a day, who would want to wear mummy's lipstick when mummy's out. I used to love wearing dresses every day and being dressed up all the time. I get excited just saying shopping because I love it so much. Shoes, handbags, oh, gorgeous outfits and stuff. I'm happy. Shannon wants to know why so many girls her age would turn their back on what most people think are the best bits of being young. You're young British female and you can wear what you want. You can have a crazy night out and come home at five in the morning with a, with a hangover and, and do all these things and it's like, okay, why, why are you choosing to leave all this fun and excitement and come into a total new faith that says you can't drink this alcohol. You've got to start dressing differently. So what is it that makes you choose and leave all that behind and come to something so new? A recent YouGov survey found that 69% of respondents think Islam encourages the repression of women and 50% associate Islam with terrorism. What puzzles me is someone who's new to the faith and religion, don't they automatically think extremist, terrorism, does it not put them off and think, well, what is Islam? Despite all that, it's estimated that last year around 5,000 people converted to Islam in the UK. Over half were white and three-quarters of them were women. Shanna's setting out on her journey. She's travelling to Wales to meet her first convert, who's a brand new Muslim. In a small community near Bridgend, Claire's the only white Muslim girl in the village. Like many converts, she's taken a new Islamic name, and now she likes to be known as Sophia. Yeah, I think I'm going to wear mine like this today, because that's where I like it. She's 24 and lives with her mum and dad, Jill and Brian. She was brought up a Christian and she graduated from college this year. Party didn't have the same appeal for Sophia that it does to most girls in their 20s. Islam offered her something different. I'm quite a conservative person. In Britain, everybody's very loose, you know, you can go out and get drunk. I've never been like that. And this is why Islam was so appealing to me, was because it was a religion where it was quite conservative. And obviously nothing like that really exists in Britain anymore. While most girls in Britain wear what they want, practicing Muslim women often wear hijab, a headscarf and long loose clothing. So what if you have to wear a long dress and, and 
you know, cover yourself modestly. It's good dressing, you know. It's like, why would you want to get everything out? Do you get what I mean? It's, it's, what's the point? You know, who are you trying to prove to? If you're really okay with yourself, who cares what you wear? I'm a very fashionable person, but I'll do it with my own style. Things won't be out, my legs won't be out, my bum won't be out, do you get what I mean? But I still look really nice. There's a way of dressing that looks nice and modest, modestly. Some people might think these rules are repressive, but Sophia doesn't think so. All this stuff about women being oppressed and stuff, it's complete codswallop. It is. Uh, most of the girls I know, well, pretty much all the girls I know, the Muslims, they're spoiled rotten. If we want to work, we can work if we want. If we don't want to, our husband will provide for us, you know. And it says in the Quran that a woman can chase knowledge if she wishes. Sophia's come to the station to meet Shanna. She only became a Muslim a few weeks ago, so she has lots to tell about what it's like to be a convert. It's a big day for her, as she has an important meeting at the mosque in Cardiff. I love this. Oh, thank you. That's thank nice. you. Have you been a Muslim like, all your life? Or? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Right. Okay, that's a stupid question for me. <laughs> <laughs> so where are we going today? Uh, basically, we're going to catch the train into Cardiff, and we're going to take. Oh, I'm going to take you to my local mosque. Why are we going to the mosque? Well, basically, when I convert it, they're going to give me a certificate just as like authenticity that I'm a Muslim. <laughs> wow. Muslims believe that when you convert to Islam, all the sins you've committed in your past are wiped out. When did you convert? It was like a couple of weeks ago, you know, wow. it's like everybody gets really excited because um, I'm like a newborn Muslim and everybody's like, oh, will you pray for me? Will you pray oh. for me? You know, because apparently, yeah. you know, uh, my prayers are a bit more powerful because they consider me as pure. How long have you been wearing the headscarf? I kind of experimented with it. I've got to be honest. I kind of put a scarf on my hair. I wondered, like, hmm, can I do this, you know? Mm. But it's like, there are Muslims out there that didn't even wear hijabs, you know? Like, yeah. like you, you know, as well. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. you don't have to wear it. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find, though, it helps you, like? To be honest, to be honest, yeah, they do look at you more. Especially the men. Oh. Especially the men. I, it's, it's ridiculous how many men come on to me just because I'm wearing a hijab. Do you feel restricted in any way? Where I live, everything is so constrictive because I'm white as well. People think that I'm like a traitor and stuff, which I'm not. Yes. Converting to Islam is relatively straightforward. You need to recite a statement saying that Allah is the only God and Muhammad is his prophet. It's said in front of witnesses and it's known as a Shahada. This is the center where I did my Shahada. Oh, so basically now what we're going to do, we're going to go in, hopefully get my certificate, <laughs> you know, that they've hopefully done for me. Uh -huh. Come in. Hi. Uh, Hello, Claire. Hi, Uncle, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Come in. <laughs> good, good, thank you. The certificate, as, let's read it together, it says, what to read now? It's an Islamic testimony certificate, 19th of September 2012, to whom I may concern, Claire Louise Evans, a.k.a. Safia. <laughs> um, uh, this is to certify that Ms. Claire Louise Evans Safiar has been embraced and accepted Islam, uh, Islam as a religion on August 2012. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> it's very nice. Accepting Allah has changed Sophia's outlook on life. I noticed a couple of weeks ago I went out and uh, I felt like my eyes were like open. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? It's like I saw everything again, you know? Yeah. It's so weird, you know? I just find that Allah's like just showered me in blessings and stuff. Hey, wow. how did it go? Yeah, here it is. Wow, <laughs> so you have your certificate now. Yeah, yeah, definitely Muslim. <laughs> it's all in here, really. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Being accepted as a Muslim is nerve wracking for converts. And the mosque is Sophia's first hurdle. Iba, this is Claire. Um, Claire, this is Iba. Um, she's new to Islam, she converted like about a month ago. The good news is, she's made welcome by the local Muslim community up in the women's prayer hall. Like, new, you know? Happy, very happy. 
Yes. This is like just a small gift from me and my family. You it's didn't um, have to do It's like that. prayer clothes when you pray. Like it'll be so much easier for you at home. Oh my and to pray gosh. Match. So um, yeah, instead of you like I'm always like having to put stuff on, they're here. And get, this is sorry. And <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm gonna yeah. cry. Thank you so much. Seriously, thank seriously. you. Oh, thank you. Like it's so nice. Thank it's you. It's so nice to have you here. Seriously, don't lose your passion and motivation. Oh, so it's so sweet yeah. of you. Thank so, yeah. you so much. Oh. It's time for evening prayer. Under Islam, men and women always pray separately to protect women's modesty. It's early days for Sophia and praying is new to her. Obviously Islam is about Allah and we all pray to Allah together. The feeling you get when you pray is it's much different when you just put your hands together. Something washes over you, it's like the deepest meditation that you can think of. It's the first time Shanna's been in a mosque since she was a child. Seeing Sophia and the girls pray together has had an unexpected impact. Today's been a bit of an experience. I felt a bit emotional watching someone who's just newly come into a faith that I've been born into and um, how she's putting all this effort and how I have been neglecting what I should be doing. It just got me thinking. What makes it more emotional and sad for me is that I know how to pray. So I'm sat in a mosque and I'm watching people read and I'm just I'm saying inside myself, I know how to do this. And I bet you guys think I don't when you look at me. I'm a bad girl, aren't I? <laughs> Crap. If you're a practicing Muslim, you're supposed to pray five times a day. And wherever you are, you have to pray in the direction of the Muslim holy city, Mecca. The first prayer is at the crack of dawn, but Sophia is still learning. I know this like morning prayer is like four until five. I, I gotta be honest, I don't know who goes up at four twenty-four in the morning. Do you get what I mean? You know, <laughs> you gotta be really dedicated to do that. Because although I love to pray, I love my sleep as well. So I kind of always miss this, but like I always like make up for it later. So I don't know if you're supposed to do that. But I'm probably really naughty Muslim. Still haven't opened this. I was kind of afraid to open it in case I got dirty. They're like shows you which way <laughs> to pray and stuff. It's really ironic actually, it's supposed to be for Islams and yet it says made in China. <laughs> That's really strange. I also have um, like my uh, my book and like, it's, it's a bit childish but like it's my book and like how to do prayers and stuff, you know, it's just got like, like what are you supposed to say and got all that sort of stuff in it, you know. So yeah, so whenever I start praying, I always have that in front of me and I do it really slowly because like, I can't do it really fast because like obviously I'm new and I want to do it properly. One of the toughest hurdles converts have to face is the reaction of their families. Shanna's come to meet Sophia's mum, Jill, to see what she thought about her daughter's decision. How are um, other members of the family with Sophia's change of religion now? They're not very happy. They, oh. they don't, they're just not very happy about it. Do you think they'll ever get used to the idea? It's very hard. As they, they are pretty accepting my family. Mm -hmm. I like to think that they are and they will come round in time. What do you think about Islam? I started reading things and I read the Quran and I just found lots of it like the Bible. You know, which I'd read things mm -hmm. in the Bible and I really don't see it's such a bad religion and, and things that she's told me that the parents have more say in things. Mm -hmm. I see lots of things. The way my mother used to say things about courting and mm -hmm. back to fetch the boy home and wait. Yeah. The Muslim religion is more of the old fashioned mm -hmm. Christian way. Mm -hmm. Sophia's dad, Brian, has lived in the Welsh Valleys all his life. For him, Islam feels like a very foreign religion. I can't say i really up for it. Like, it's a different culture, isn't it? Um, so, like, she seems to be happy with it, so, you know. 
She's 24 years of age now. You know, she got her own mind to make up now. But uh, I did tell her, you know, she is Welsh. You know, yeah. no need to wear the uh, clothes because you know she got her own clothes there. You know, see, at the end of the day, she got pretty hair, curly, like her old man. <laughs> so there's no need to hide it, is it? If I did say something, she would probably wouldn't talk to me again. <laughs> so you know. I got the end of the day, she got a final for herself, and she. But uh, she knows I'm only at the end of the, end of the phone. She ever needs me. She got so good to pick the phone up. I feel sorry for her dad. I think going to that pub and his friends sit there with a pint of lager or whatever, they'd be like, well, how's your daughter doing? She's still got that thing on her head. They could be making a joke out of it, and how is he to reply and respond to it? Um, he, he would really thoroughly need to understand his daughter before he understands the religion and that just does not happen overnight. Next, Shanna's travelling up to Scotland. She wants to meet a convert who's been practicing Islam for a while. Elana converted over two years ago. She's 20 and lives in Glasgow. She's a media student but what's most important in her life is her faith, Islam. I'm a traveller, so I'm from the fairground and get Scottish and English travellers and not gypsies, completely different thing. And um, I grew up on a caravan site. This is my home and that's my wee caravan, wee carahut. And I live right across my mum and dad. So, if I don't feel like cooking, she feeds me. <laughs> Alana was brought up a Protestant and was baptised as a baby. But her conversion to Islam hasn't always been easy. It's really hard for me because, especially we're living in the east end of Glasgow, and there's no Muslims here, and there's such a white Scottish, there's hard, you know, why, why do you think, how old, why would you want to be, choose to be a Muslim? And I feel as if I need to be extra polite for them to know that I'm human, that I'm, you know, Scottish, you know, because I feel like they, they think I'm going to do something to them, they've got that look. Shanna's come to meet Alana to find out if it was hard to leave her old life behind. Come on in. Were you into, like, all that stuff, partying, clubbing? Well, I did go out quite a lot mm -hmm. when I was younger. And as of, like... Did you used to drink? Uh -huh, yeah. Mm -hmm used to drink and go out mm -hmm. and then I would go out, not drink but still go out to the clubs and then now it's not going out to the clubs and not drinking at all. It's more been a, a change for my friends to be honest, ah. adapting to find why is she not coming out. What were they like? They just, well, the first, you know, the typical thing they say is uh, you don't have to drink but still come out, right. you know, you can mm -hmm. be the taxi driver, you know, but um, which was fine mm -hmm. and then the more I was like, no, this is defeating the purpose. What has been the biggest right. thing you have had to give okay. up? I love Parmaham. Oh. Love it, the salt and wrap it around and it's just beautiful. Um, so that was the hardest yeah, thing? Yeah, I think that, and I think, you know, I'm known for walking at a Tesco with like just a packet of Parma ham and just eating it <laughs> just as it is. And that, I think that has been the hardest thing and that's what my cousin says to me, how will you give up Parma ham, you know, and I'm like, yeah, I know. But it's by chance that Alana encountered Islam. When she first left college two and a half years ago, she set out for Lanzarote, hoping to become a club rep. When you're 18, it's the whole, oh, you need to go out and live your life while you're young and you need to go and do all the things you're going to regret. And I was like, right, I want to go out and do everything that I'm going to regret. I want to have a crazy six month, just get absolutely mental drunk, just go out, do what I want to do and have a brilliant time and come back and then work. And that just didn't happen. What did happen is she met her fiancé, Abdul. He introduced her to Islam and now they're planning to get married. I have to have an um, Islamic wedding and a British wedding. But I think I would try to make it a bit more like a British wedding for the sake of my dad. And my dad's one and only. Aww. So I think it would have to be the white and you know, yeah. bridesmaids. Just out of respect that mm. they, they, this is the only chance for me to do that. Mm. You know? So I wouldn't like it to make it too, you know, look too foreign. Yeah. <laughs> would you let the guests so, get drunk on your wedding? Uh, no, I think... Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I, I know, I, no, I, what I mean is it is people's own choice to drink, but I think yeah. if they're coming to my wedding mm -hmm. and know that I'm a Muslim and my fiancé, they would have respect, I would write that, if, you, if you're not happy about that, don't come. 
Ooh. And I think if they love me enough and it's my family, yeah. then they should for that one day. I'm sure they could manage to not drink for the one night. But for Alana, the importance of Islam goes far beyond falling in love. It answers some of her big questions about life. I've always believed in God that, well, there being something. It doesn't matter what you believe. I think we all deep down, if you, you, you must think, oh, when I die, I hope I go to a better place. You must, I mean, you can't be human and not think, oh, when I die, that's it, I don't care. Everyone must think, like, I want to go, you know, some people with my relatives that have died or what, you must have that sort of feeling. Especially because I never got to meet my granny and granddad, I always think, well, what happens if they're actually in heaven? And if I don't get to go there, then it would just be terrible, you know, <laughs> so. But it still required courage for Alana to break the news to her family about her conversion. Just before um, Ramadan was when I told my family that I was a Muslim. I've been a Muslim for a while, but I didn't tell them. I was freaking out. Um, but I thought, if I'm going to do Ramadan, they're going to know that I'm not eating. So I had to tell them. I finished work and I thought, right, I'm going to do it. So I went in and all of a sudden the adrenaline hit me. I started panicking and shaking. And I went in, they could tell my mum and dad, they could just tell, you know what I'm like. I went, I've got something to tell you, and I just burst out crying. Then my dad started to get annoyed because he's wanting to watch his programme. <laughs> so he's like, hurry up, hurry up, tell us what it is. And then my mum's starting to get worried. She went, You're pregnant. My dad's like, You've crashed a car. And I went, I burst out laughing then because then I was like, that's the worst thing that they could have thought was going to happen to me. And I was like, no, I actually want to be Muslim. And my dad hurt straight out with, oh, I thought you already was a Muslim. And then I burst out laughing even more because I thought, well, I'm making such a big deal out of something that obviously they, you know, already knew, you know. Actually, it felt like I was telling some, like telling them I was gay or something like that. Oh, I was pregnant. That's what it felt like. Alana's determined to learn everything she can about her faith. She devotes her free time to studying and going to evening classes. Tonight, Shanna's come to join her at her weekly Islamic studies course. Okay, yeah. Even after like, I became Muslim, I've studied a lot of books mm -hmm. and I've got them, read them all back to front. Oh, wow. And I've got that many and I just felt that, you know, I know the basics. Mm -hmm. or, well, I think I know the basics and I thought, well, I need something else. So I was told about a syllabus and I applied for a scholarship and I got accepted. Uh -huh. now, but what I would like is to do this course um, and then I would like to study Arabic. Oh, wow. Because my fiancé, he's Arabic, mm -hmm. he speaks Arabic. Um, and if we have any children, inshallah, <laughs> then I would like to be speaking Arabic so I'm not getting talked about there talking in <laughs> Arabic and I don't know what they're, what they're saying. Um, I would like that and I would like to be able to read the Quran um, mm -hmm. in Arabic rather than just in English. I wouldn't feel as if I'm a proper Muslim in the future if I didn't speak some level of Arabic. It's really nice to see people actually go out their way to uh -huh. learn. At the class, the women sit behind the men and following Islamic guidelines on modesty, they cover up, wearing hijab. But the lecture's been held up and Shanna soon finds out why. A course official's taken Alana to one side. To attend the lecture, Shanna needs to wear a headscarf. I'm having to wear a scarf because um, I didn't use my brains before I came here. Right, go on, yeah, I'll let you do it. I'll come up on laughing. This is really bad. I feel so self-conscious about it. Do you know what I mean? You're not used to wearing it. Yeah, it just... It's, no, but it's, it's easier for women to wear less clothes than it is to put more on. And it's also that thing... It's an intense course and there's lots to learn. Alana studies everything from Quranic history to Sharia law. That one. It's a term which many people uh, go about hear all the time. The class is run by a charity who use a room at Glasgow University. So acting in obedience to God through a guiding light from God with the intention of seeking his pleasure. Shanna's shocked at the division between the sexes and the different expectations for men and women. It's matter when you go into a lecture hall, even though it's Islamic, I didn't think you need these things you need to be covered and I didn't even think about men. I didn't even think about the division of guys and women and where they're going to be sat. I just thought we're all treated equally. We're all going to be sat in one room.
having made a blunder last night, Alana's asked Shanna over to talk about how Muslim women ought to dress. Like many converts, Alana's interpretation of the dress code is strict, but not all Muslim girls are the same, particularly Shanna. Under Islam, haram means forbidden and halal means allowed. Oh, I've actually halal, hal halalified my wardrobe. <laughs> How do you halalify your wardrobe? Because, like, I <laughs> halalified. Halalified. And this is really nice, you'd probably like this. This is something that like, oh, I would wear. Oh, pretty. That would pay up with tights. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if I've got a top on and I've got like mm -hmm. this cotton underneath, I can still wear it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I've halalified. So that's halalified. Halalified, yeah. <laughs> that's my term that I've created. Yeah. It's gorgeous, <laughs> that. <laughs> now, my non halal stuff, mm -hmm. which would be. Non halal stuff. My non halal stuff. You've got this division. Yeah, I have. I've separated all. So this would cover me, but it doesn't actually cover my bum. So I would know if oh, I was I wearing that. Hmm? No, oh my god, so that... So I would know that if I was wearing that, I'd have to wear a baggy or skirt. Ah. You know? But it's still baggy. Yeah, but it doesn't cover my bum. Fair enough. So, if I'm halalified, yes, that's... So I'm halalified right now, aren't I? Oh, your, your bum's covered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're... Oh never, I won't even go there, I won't even go there. <laughs> okay, I'm half halal. <laughs> you're half halalified, yeah. I wore these to my cousin's wedding. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've kept all my good shoes, because I just love them. And I think you'd like these ones. These are the best ones. So I wouldn't wear these going out. Why? Because it's not part of the dress codes. Yeah, but so are you saying they're not halalified? No, they're not halalified. How can shoes possibly... Because you're walking and wiggling at the same time. <laughs> they, are these okay? Are these halalified? They were, but any higher than mm. that and I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear them. I Surely wouldn't. it's not against... Uh-huh. I've uh -huh. not heard of it. Let me hijabify you and see oh how good God. you look. <laughs> Honestly, go. Okay, here we go. At least it keeps you warm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, beautiful. Shall I put my hair up? <laughs> <laughs> How do we look? You look beautiful. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Take them unhalal boots off. <laughs> it's the most difficult thing to go out and be covered. You look beautiful though. <laughs> it's the first time Shanna's come face to face with how strict Islam can be when it comes to rules on female dress. I look Muslim. Well, I don't even know what I feel. Mm -hmm. Transformed. Mm -hmm. You're covered. Yeah, it's, it's not that I was naked and not covered before, no, do you know, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's just, um, I've got something baggy on me, mm -hmm. and then I've, I've got, you can't see my hair, mm -hmm. and um, I feel less pretty. Does that sound really bad? <laughs> Well, the, the, the whole purpose of wearing hijab is so that you're not going out and drawing attention to yourself, so in a way it's working. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not ready for it, no. Shanna didn't expect to be criticised for the way she dresses. I don't mean to sound rude to the people who agree with Alana, but I totally disagree with that. That you can't wear high heels. And my boots were not halalified for her. I think she was looking at me thinking, I'm... She was seeing it as, in, I'm born into this religion as a Muslim, so... I think she automatically thought, well, you should be practising and be doing what I'm doing if you're not already and I've only been doing this for two years and I think she was comparing and contrasting us quite a lot. I felt judged by her. I'm happy the way I am um, and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that I'm not Muslim because I'm not doing it. And just because I'm modern, that's got nothing to do with my religion. I will be, I will be dying. I was born as a modern um, British Muslim and I will die as a modern British Muslim. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with it. It isn't the first time Shanna's felt judged. Her modelling career has attracted criticism from some Muslims in the past. In 2011, Shanna attempted to become the first Muslim to represent Britain in the Miss Universe competition. The decision led to threats from members of the Muslim community. 
One Miss Universe hopeful has come under ugly attack for wanting to represent Britain in the glamorous pageant. She has been threatened with death because of her religion. Well, some of the uh, fellow Muslims out there are saying this is against Islam. A woman, as they put it, should not be parading around. I, I don't think I'm doing anything wrong. We live in England. We live in a... I'm British. Yes, I'm Muslim, but we live in such a Western society. I didn't think, oh, as a Muslim, I can't do this. That, that never crossed my mind. Shanna was devastated by the intolerance she met with. The hate mail sent to her was so distressing. It's the first time she's been able to look at it since the competition. She won't look pretty after having her head removed by a rusty pen knife. You trashy whore and you should publicly announce that you're not a Muslim. Stop dis disrespecting Islam by giving this image. You're nothing but a whore. And may your soul of your father burn in the deepest pits of hell for allowing his daughter to publicly shame Islam. If you was a real Muslim, you would care of more of protecting the image of Islam that we fight to preserve. Instead, you just take all your clothes off and crave for personal attention. You will burn in hell next to your father. Therefore, you're just trash. Oh God. I need a tissue, I think. This is bad. Forget Muslim, whatever religion, Christianity or whatever. I'm a, I'm a human being, so if you're going to, like, say something mean about me, I'm going to get emotional. I, I've got feelings and emotions, and I think some people kind of forget that. Shanna's back on the road again. There's a whole new issue she wants to find out about. What family life's like when you convert to Islam. Lisa married a Pakistani Muslim man seven years ago, but she only properly converted to Islam herself last year. She lives in Reading. She's a full-time mum, and her work's cut out bringing up her three daughters. I've loaded the dishwasher, fed the cats. That's it, it's all done this morning. Until we get back from the school, and then there's hoovering. Well, what, she wears hijab full time, Amira does. Wears it all Mama. the time. Amira! It's ready. Sometimes it'd be easier for them all to wear hijab, and they wouldn't have to worry about hair. <laughs> does it affect you, do you think, me, me wearing hijab? Affect me how? Do you feel like embarrassed or anything? Mm -mm. No. That's good, then. Because all people make them twist. Yeah. That's right. Taught you well, chick, didn't I? There you go, you're done. Thanks. My nanny, she's the one that, she don't, she looks older than that now. <laughs> but she's the one that says about me, um, oh, that's the girl that wears the salami on her head. <laughs> but she's got dementia, so she don't even hardly remember me. She just calls me the girl with the salami on the head. <laughs> My mum calls me a nun on the run. My neighbour says, here comes the old ninja. Calls me a ninja. <laughs> but yeah, they don't do it in a, in a nasty way. It's all, you know, a bit of banter because they know I like it. I like the banter and I give the banter back. Let's go. Come on, Let's go. Lisa's made a big decision for the family this year. Instead of celebrating the traditional British holidays, they'll observe the Muslim festival Eid. We're not having our English Christmas this year. So this is our very big Eid for us. But it's going to be kind of weird because we've always celebrated Christmas. Because I'm a Muslim, I don't want to celebrate Christmas. It's not part of being a Muslim, it's not part of the religion. It's basically, I believe that if we do a Christmas, then we're put in partnership with our God by celebrating something to do with another religion's God. So yeah, that's why. Following Islamic festivals might be one big step. But there are other big decisions to be made. Lisa's going Islamic clothes shopping in London, and Shanna's coming to meet her. But it's the one sort of fashion she isn't familiar with. I'm Shanna. I'm Lisa. Nice to meet you. From bonnets to one pieces, it's a whole new shopping lingo. I would not wear that. You lie, you <laughs> Lisa's decided to make a controversial step made by a minority of Muslim women. She wants to cover her face fully and wear the niqab. How can you see through that? It's knitted, I can see you all right. 
You can breathe through it, it's really thin. Mm. How do you eat with that on? Put it up. And eat. Would you really wear that? Yep. Without Every single day? Every single day. Once you start wearing it, you can't wear it part time. And That's then why it's a big decision. I like it. Do you not feel weird covering your face up? Keep it for my husband's eyes only. But Lisa hasn't made the decision for her husband. She wants to do it as a sign of commitment to her faith. What would your husband think? He don't want me to wear one. If I saw you in a street. Certain scholars believe it shows extra piety. But to some, it can seem like a radical step. Do you think like people look at you and think extremists? Yeah, so I don't know who I am. Yeah. Lisa was a bit of a bad girl before she converted. And Shannon wants to find out what sort of life she left behind. Although tattoos are forbidden under Islam, they still remind her of her colourful past. I was looking at your hand, you've still got your oh, tattoos. I've got loads of tattoos. Oh, I've got loads and loads of tattoos. <laughs> How many have you got? I'm covered. Are you serious? On my leg and my, I've got both my feet are done. Let's have a look. I've got this one. Wait, 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 nanny. Yeah. You love your nanny, don't That's you? That's my nanny that passed. My oh. dad's mum. I know that I had them before I was Muslim. Yeah. What do you find Islam has like brought to you? Definitely calmed me down. Definitely calmed me down. <laughs> I was a wild thing. I was feisty. I used to fight. Literally. Yeah. Argue in the street. You know. We used to walk through town, mm -hmm. especially with my other sister. Mm -hmm. And if somebody used to bump into us, we used to have a big row in the town. You know. I think that I've changed quite a lot. For I've the better. That. Yeah, definitely. But Lisa has a very unusual family setup that's allowed under Islam, but is shocking to most Westerners. All my friends know that I'm a co-wife. I've never kept that a secret from anyone. You're, you're a co-wife? Yeah, yeah. It's just that's, not right a man being shared. Wrong, but How did you meet? I met him in the park behind my mum's house. We used to hang about a lot there. And oh. then he come, and then we fell in love, I suppose. How old were you? 14. And we was like love's young dream. Mm -hmm. And then his family made him marry her. When Lisa was 18, she found out her boyfriend had gone to Pakistan for an arranged marriage. Six years later, he married Lisa in an Islamic religious ceremony. Islam allows a man to have up to four wives so long as he treats them equally. So with the, um, the co-wife, do you live in the same house? Like what, as his other wife? Yeah, I'd like... Kill her. <laughs> We'd kill each other, actually, because we don't like each other. So you, you, you wouldn't be able to tolerate that? Bed hopping in the night. At least when he's saying I can't see what he's doing and I don't have to witness it for myself. <laughs> I'm doing it in the same room. Crap. I've set rules though. Mm -hmm. Like, I told him I don't want him to have sex with her. He got a choice who he has. He has to choose. If he wants sex with her, to have sex with her. Don't have sex with me. But I'm 30. I, I decide to be in this situation. I'm in love with a man. Lisa has had difficulty being accepted by the born Muslim community and this has caused her trouble at home. I don't have nothing to do with oh. his family at all. Nothing at all? No, like, nothing at all. Because I'm white, I'm English. Mm -hmm. Don't matter that I'm Muslim, I could be black and Muslim, they still wouldn't accept me because I'm not Pakistani. Even though you've converted? Yeah. Yeah, 16 years together and never once sat in a room with his mum or dad. Lisa's closest friend is her sister, Kimberly. As a British girl, it makes her angry to see her sister be a second wife. When we were younger, she was crying in the bedroom because he had gone and got married. But she still accepted it. She's still gone and accepted it now. So it's really quite frustrating sometimes. Like, she's actually putting up with it. I, I couldn't do that. She's a strong Muslim woman, so she shouldn't have to be like the second best like she should be the best and the only that's the way that life is i think she puts on a really strong face like it doesn't really bother her but it does it does because she's having to like half of the week live like a single parent i don't think a man should be allowed to marry two women and live two separate lives like that it's not fair on children they're confused Oh my god, she's, she's a co-wife, it's, it's crazy, and she, her, her, the co-wife, the other wife, lives down the road and she's accepted that, 
it's it's in our it's in Pakistani Muslim culture that um, a man can marry up to four times. I would literally like kill my husband if he ever even thought about the idea of being. Oh no, it just makes me sick. Come on, you have got to be one hell of a strong woman to take that. Shanna's learning there are real obstacles to overcome for converts. Next, she's going up north to meet Anaya, who's had a totally different struggle. She can't find a Muslim husband at all. She splits her time between working in a busy call centre in Accrington and her full social life with friends. She converted to Islam four years ago, after going through a difficult time. I've always been interested in Islam from an early age of being at high school. I've had loads of Muslim friends. When I got to about 21, 22, um, I was going through a really rough patch, patch at home. So I decided to like, turn to Islam. I literally woke up one day thinking, I need to do this before I die. I need to do it. Because if I die and not a Muslim, I'm not, I'm not going to be happy or, you know, I wanted to go to the like to paradise, so I wanted to, to do it. Hello, how can I help with your account? When I took my shahada, the, the weight just, I'm not joking, like it tingles me now just thinking about it, but the, the weight just got took off my shoulders like I can't explain. <laughs> Anaya lives in Hazingdon, a small town in Lancashire. Shannon knows well from her childhood. How's my dad behaved for? Have you? Yeah, I went, I went to school here. No. Yeah, I was living in high school. Ah, that's really nice. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. What year were you yeah. in? Uh, I'm 28. So you, you're two years older than me. Definitely the same. Nothing has changed here. For Anaya, it's hard to meet a prospective Muslim partner when she lives in a remote northern town. I'd like to just bump into, you know, oh, sorry. <laughs> in you the shopping centre. You know, like just like yeah. literally walk into someone, that would be my ideal meeting someone, but it doesn't work like that, does it? Many Muslims have marriages arranged by their family, but without relatives to help, Anaya's had to resort to more ingenious ways to find a husband. Muslim speed dating. You've got this massive audience of parents. Oh no, watching yeah. you. Yeah, so I'm like sat here and I'm like You're nervous, trying, yeah, and I'm trying to talk to this guy in front and I'm the parents are in there somewhere. Are they the guy's parents? Oh, yeah. Oh no. But everyone's parents are standing there watching. I'm like, oh no. So <laughs> it, it's pressure from there and then... And like, I'd, I had guys coming to talk to me who later on... I started talking to them. Mm -hmm. And then they'd, they'd come around with barriers like, my mum doesn't want me to, you know, talk to you. Don't talk to you why? Because they come up with silly excuses that I'm too old, I'm too tall. I'm going to go back to how I used to be. You know, so that, rubbish is yeah. that? Anaya's best friends have stuck with her every step of the way, through conversion, and now through the search to find a husband. My friends, they've really been supportive. When I started wearing the headscarf, it was a shock. But they've got used to me wearing a scarf, and it doesn't e they don't even see the scarf anymore. But then when I take it off, they're like, Wow, I've not seen your hair for a year. Like, you know, like, so they appreciate it. And that's when I turned around and said, that's why I cover it up. The moment Anaya converted to Islam, the dating rules changed. She couldn't go out to bars serving alcohol or meet with guys alone. Shanna's curious to find out what her new tactics are. This is where I go browsing for men. <laughs> so this is how they see it. Okay. There's me at a wedding. No, you look so pretty, you look stunning. <laughs> Seriously. Oh God. <laughs> I've met people off here, mm -hmm. but then you like you obviously studied the profile and they say like the five foot eleven, you yeah. know, really good height for myself, and then you turn up and they're like five foot three. Oh my God. Oh, that's happened. So they lie. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> and like the photos don't <laughs> even, <laughs> yeah, they don't even look like they want to when they turn out. Total different picture. Total. Anaya's encountered many problems. Often the guys just want to have fun and aren't serious enough about marriage. Obviously, we're not allowed to date. If, you, if I'm alone with the guy, things could happen when it shouldn't happen. 
And he wants dating. Yeah. Whereas I don't. He's okay. putting on religious. And he's a Muslim. Well, I'm assuming so. Yeah, he is. His surname. So they can't tell people on here that they're Muslim. They're not going to be telling people outside that they're Muslim. Yeah. Even if she finds someone who's devout, their families might have different plans for their sons. Might have someone already in mind for the, the son or, or daughter to get married to, or they want their like, do new daughter-in-law to live with the parents. Okay. Whereas I, I don't mind doing that for a, a short period of time, but I'm not willing to live with the parents forever. I don't know how converts get married, I really don't. It's so hard, and I can't tell you how much pain it's, it's caused me. I mean, even my mum's turned around and said, does that mean you're never going to get married? Shanna's surprise, Ina has found it hard to adapt to the marriage customs of the traditional Muslim community. Hi, you all right? And I was like having massive difficulty finding a husband, and I didn't ever think that that would be a problem. And um, I think she's, she's only having this difficulty because she's converted. Otherwise, she could just find anyone she wants. How it would work normally for Muslims is we help each other, we introduce each other to each other's families and um, word of mouth. Um, she hasn't got that. She, she's just totally on her own. Thank you. Bye-bye. Learning about the difficulties converts face has made Shanna reflect on her own conflicts with her religion. I'm questioning what can I do, can I do modelling, if I can, what kind of modelling. That has come to my attention. But um, It's not like you see me in the Nuts magazine or something, <laughs> or an FHM or something, no. Shanna's come to Edinburgh, hoping to find answers for her questions about her modelling career. She wants to meet a convert who's more like her, a modern British Muslim. I'm going to meet a convert who's a model. Um, maybe she has the answers that I don't have. Maybe she can back it up. You can be a model and a Muslim. Maybe she can relate to me, because we're, we're just the same. Aisha's an internationally successful model. And today she's working on some of her own fashion designs. She's appeared on catwalks from New York to Paris. And she's worked for leading brands Topshop and Mulberry. She grew up on a deprived council estate in Edinburgh. But at 16, she was scouted by a model agency and she shot to stardom. She converted to Islam four years ago. But has she found it hard to combine modelling with her faith? I've, I've had a bit of a struggle, like, um, and stuff. Do, do, you, do you find that you have that struggle where being, can you be like a Muslim and a model? When I first went to Islam, I stopped everything. All fashion, all really? anything that was even, yeah. You stopped all fashion? Yeah, I changed, I totally was like covering, I was like probably a bit too extreme. Although Aisha knows catwalk modelling is controversial if you're a Muslim, she's justified it to herself. It all comes back to what you're wearing and your intention. So if I'm on a catwalk and I'm wearing a dress and I've like beautified my appearance and stuff like that, I think there's a big difference in me walking down a catwalk dressed like that and me walking down the street dressed like that. Because yeah. what is my intention? Well, my mm -hmm. intention is to show these clothes and this makeup to people who want to buy it for their mm -hmm. shop. Whereas if you're making yourself really beautiful mm -hmm. and walking down the street, then that's a different intention. It's not like you're doing it out of necessity. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Aisha's managed to reconcile modelling with her faith, but she's had to make some tough decisions about the work she does. I try not to make stuff that I wouldn't wear. Yeah. You know? Like, I never do bikini or underwear, mm -hmm. but I did make a pair of shorts. And then I was like having this dilemma, like, oh my God, like these are shorts. I can't even wear shorts. She's more like looking down. <laughs> How tall are you? Yeah, tall, like just under 5'9. Like, no, I like, can imagine. Like, like, I think it looks amazing. I feel a bit like Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> it actually I see she does. What colours are Man, that looks crazy on me. <laughs> you look um, good in that. Every head, actually, it's a bit face. scary. <laughs> I always had this like s stupid, oh god, silly perception that oh, Muslim converts are just strict. They're, yeah. they're just like, they're just, I don't know, they, I didn't think they could be so fun. 
Aww, to be with. Oh, that's so cute. It might seem like Aisha's answered Shanna's questions, but she isn't convinced. Aisha, she, she was a really, really lovely person. I was really, like, shocked when I saw her, like, the way she was. She was just so cool, down to earth, um, so totally into fashion. I really thought I would have answers from Aisha, but no. I think I need to ask those questions. I need a, a stronger answer. Shanna's made a brave decision. Of all the people she wants to ask a second opinion from, it's Alana, the convert who is most critical of her dress. I can't live without my heels. That is something I could never sacrifice. Well, you wear your heels and then you just go lower and lower and lower. Take them unhalal boots off. What do you think of me being a model? <laughs> oh, God, that laugh. <laughs> Honestly. As a Muslim, if you're practicing Muslim, then I do think that you shouldn't be doing it because the whole point of that is that you're, it's, look at me, it's defeat the purpose, do you know what I mean? It's not. But what if it's just like, your intention's right, but that's just a job. You're still showing your body, showing what you look like, even though you may have good intentions, you're still doing that for people to look at you. You're not meant to walk out the door to show off how beautiful you are. That's all point around hijab. What Alana's told Shanna raises a question about whether she can be a model at all. Many young women feel it's their right to wear what they want, but Islam teaches that a woman should protect her modesty and her beauty should be kept for her husband's eyes only. Shanna's getting ready to go to Aisha's fashion show. It would normally be her ideal night out. Hello. We're just going to be like a little show tonight, a little preview of the spring summer collection. So like just hang out and like yeah. have a nice time. Yeah. And like... But Shanna's journey is coming to an end. And after everything she's learned, she's wondering how far she's prepared to go for her faith. I kind of feel really weird. Like I'm just thinking what I was talking to Alana about fashion and then I'm, I'm just at this fashion show where there's short dresses, there's makeup, glamour and Alana's like, this, you shouldn't be doing this and, um, and then it's like I'm just doing the total opposite of what she's saying about making yourself better and being a good Muslim. So um, yeah, it just, it just felt all weird. I feel, um, I feel a bit lost. Shanna's come to some important realisations about what Islam means to her. After seeing the converts bettering themselves and following a total new faith, a new religion, it's made me realise that, well, it's my religion, why am I not doing it? Shanna just woke me up to what my faith is and what it means to me. I believe in Allah, I believe in my religion. I think things are going to change in my life. Slowly, very slowly. I thought about wearing the headscarf. I don't think I'd ever wear a headscarf. I'm still gonna be modern. I love this Western culture, this society I live in. I'm British, I live here, it's who I am. But what do these insights mean for her career? Since she was a child, all she's ever dreamed of was being a model. That doesn't mean that that's it. End of my modeling career. I think it's just where I'm just gonna be more selective to what work I'm doing and rather than just like letting a designer say I'll oh, put this on and walk on the catwalk it's not going to be that case it's going to be like no well I'm not going to wear that because of I don't think that's I, I, I look modest in that. Shanna's decided to call Alana with a surprising request. I was thinking uh, a lot about what we talked about and um, yeah um, it, it kind of all made so much sense and stuff and it just made me think about things uh -huh. and um, I thought maybe sometime when you're free we could probably go to the mosque and go and pray sometime. Okay, uh -huh. It's Friday prayers at Glasgow Central 
and the mosque is packed. It's the end of Shanna's journey, and it'll be the first time she's ever prayed in a mosque. Okay, now you're gonna have to do this. Okay, for me. I'm gonna have to halalify you again. <laughs> right. Converts making me something that I kind of already should be, if you know what I mean. Okay, are you ready? Yeah. Did you have a fight? Ready? <laughs> Shall we go? Right, let's go. Cool. Okay. Can you speak out loud? As <laughs> My Arabic's not great. Okay. Um, Mine's so, not good either. <laughs> oh, yeah, so this is just the way I've learnt it. Okay. Um, so we start with the Adan. Okay. You can't, can you keep your eyes? You need to keep your eyes open. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so and you just straight down instead of ahead. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Okay. is surprised by what she's learned about the reasons why girls convert to Islam. Now, as I've met the converts, I've understood how they've, they've got this structure, they've got they follow these guidelines and they've found peace within themselves. I always imagine that converts just convert because they found a Muslim partner and they have to. I didn't think they want to. The hijab means I am a Muslim, accept me for who I am now. The converts have just given up drinking, going out and that lifestyle they had before because they found a faith and they don't need that in their lives anymore. Ultimately, she's learned a lot about herself. Looking back